Let's look at the 2022 Leave Insert Higher Level Paper 1 Deferred Paper. So in A part I were asked us to multiply out and simplify 2m plus 1 all in a bracket square. This is a fantastic little starter question here. Absolutely beautiful. So I'm just working through every single step here. I take the two brackets and I break up the first bracket multiplied by the second and I get 4m squared plus 4m plus 1. Nice little five marks there. Lovely. In the second part then, any positive odd number can be written in the form of 2k plus 1, where k is an element of the integers and k is greater than or equal to 0. And any number of this form must be odd. Using your answer to part A part I show that the square of any odd number is also an odd number. So I'm going to take the information from above. I'm going to say that 2k plus 1 squared should give me an answer of 4k squared plus 4k plus 1. I'm taking that from the multiplying I did in part i. Now I need to show that it's odd and how we can show it's odd here if we factorize the 4k squared plus 4k we leave it that it is divisible by 2 and anything divisible by 2 is even. Anything even plus 1 will turn into an odd number. So by doing this work here we have proven that 2k plus 1 all to be squared is odd. That was a five mark question and on to part three. So proof by induction is needed here and they're asking us to show that Tn is odd for all values of n that are natural numbers. So there are four clear steps that we follow when we are doing proof by induction and the first one is to prove that the statement is true for n equals one. So I take my Tn equals 2m plus one and I sub in one for n and I can clearly see that I just get T. So t is equal to 2m plus 1, t must be odd. We have proved previously that 2m plus 1 is odd. Moving on to step 2 then, it follows on that we assume that it is true for n equals k. So I take my k value and I sub it in for n and I get t to the power of k equals 2m plus 1. Step three then is where a lot of the work is actually done. So it must be true for n equals k plus one, but we're going to show it. So I get t to the power of k plus one, which turns into t to the power of k multiplied by t to the power of one. And I use my rules of indices to create that. t to the power of k is equal to 2m plus one, as we've seen in part two. And t to the power of one is equal to 2m plus one, as we've seen in step one. I multiply them out and we have done this previously in this question and I get... 4m squared plus 4m plus 1 and I do similar to what I did before. I factorise out 2 out of the two first terms and I can show definitively that that is odd. So yes, it is true for n equals k plus 1. The fourth step of proof by induction is your conclusion and this is very important and if you don't include this, you will not get full marks. It's as simple as that. So what we need to say is we need to say it was true for n equals 1 it was true for n equals k plus 1 whenever it's true for k n equals k. So then, therefore, it's true for n is an element, all n values, sorry, that's an element of the natural numbers. Now, there can be slight variations in your conclusion wording, and that's perfectly fine. But you need to state four things, that it's true for n equals 1, it's true for n equals k, true for n equals k plus 1 and therefore true for all n values. So make sure that's included whatever way you word. There was 10 marks going for that question and now on to the last part. So part B here is an algebraic absolute staple. So they're asking you to write the following expression as a single fraction in a simplest form. We are absolutely not solving here. We are not looking for the value of x. We are simplifying, which in this case just means doing the outstanding calculation, which is subtraction. How do you subtract fractions? You need a common denominator. And because we have variables or x is underneath the line in the denominator space, your only option is to multiply them together to get the common denominator. I am changing from 3x minus 5 to 3x minus 5 by x on the bottom, which means I multiply that 2 at the top by x. And on the right hand side, I am going from an x in the denominator to 3x minus 5 by x. So that means I multiply the top, the 6, by 3x minus 5. I do my workings out on the top. I combine my fractions and I get minus 16x plus 30 on the top. And then I have my denominator, 3x minus 5 by 
We generally don't multiply the denominators together there because we are leaving an opportunity there for us to do any simplifying down further if it's needed. Now, you always check that. You always double check. And factorising is your best friend when you're trying to simplify down fractions, especially algebraic one. We can see here that our solution is in its lowest form. So we are done and dusted. Make sure you rewind and work with me through this question. And don't forget to subscribe. I'll see you in the next video.